Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about accessibility tips for Alaska cruises, especially if you are going to be going out of Seattle, Washington. My name is Haley. I have sailed Alaska on three different cruise lines, so don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. Let's start out with flying. Here's some accessible flying tips. If you require oxygen, you need to check out your airline's policy for what kind of machines they allow on the plane. Some of them require documentation and waivers that need to be approved days before travel. Another thing to remember is wheelchair assistance. You can set up wheelchair assistance at the airport by calling your airline ahead of time. They will pick you up at the ticketing section, take you through security, to and from gates, to other lounges, and, to your tr and transport you to your final destination. Airplane seating. When you are booking a ticket, try to aim for aisle seats towards the front of the plane if you cannot book first class. Don't forget to take advantage of pre-board as well. I've seen a lot of individuals that struggle with mobility that are in the back of the plane, in the middle and window seats, and it is just so hard for them to crawl out of those seats. And just a couple of quick tips for SeaTac. Arrange transportation ahead of time for when you get there. Black Lane can actually pick up right by the arrivals versus having to walk out, go across to where the taxis and ride shares pick up. And then when you are going home from SeaTac, make sure you get there early. This airport is super busy and it's honestly the longest we've ever waited for wheelchair assistance. Let's talk about Seattle. You're going to want to take your time between jet lag and how hilly the city is take it easy on yourself. You're also going to want to rent a scooter if you have mobility issues. Scoot around is great. We like to use them. They were able to drop off right at our hotel for my father. Let's talk about Pike Place Market. Give yourself some time here. I highly recommend like with any attraction, getting up and going early. There are less crowds when you're trying to maneuver in a scooter while trying all the different treats and shopping down here the morning is going to be the best time because this place will just fill up by the late morning hours. And if you want to experience it the way that it should be, get there early. You also need to pick your hotel location wisely. A lot of people like to be near Pike Place, which is the green dot here. This is my favorite area in the red circles. But remember, when you look at this on a map, this is very different than in person because a lot of these streets have huge hills and those arrows right there, they actually so show the better way to get back to the hotels that I like because going right down to the market from there is a huge 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 incline so keep that in mind when you're looking all right let's get cruising biggest tip is to use a travel agent they can arrange to have a scooter or wheelchair waiting in your room wheelchair service at the pier for embarkation disembarkation days dining accommodations closer to the door and this is at no cost to you now it's also very important to pick the right room. Now most scooters fit in every style room. There are accessible rooms, they do go fast. My dad actually used a standard room. It was a little difficult. One of the things I'm gonna recommend is look at the deck plans. What we did is we picked a room in an area like this so that we could kind of leave the scooter out in the hallway. You're technically not supposed to, but because we had such an open area, the stateroom attendants didn't mind us leaving the scooter on that one wall. Now remember, you may need to charge it. We actually never charged my dad's once the whole entire cruise. It wasn't until the end that it started getting low. Um, so you might have to bring that in your room for them, but I would ask for help if you are traveling solo to do that because it is a tight squeeze. The last tip that I have is for excursions. There are quite a few excursions through the cruise line that are handy accessible, but I personally like going the private route. We had some help getting my dad on a fishing charter. It was really, really great. So if you can't find what you like in the cruise planner, don't forget to look private. All right, I lied. I have a bonus tip. So whichever glacier you are going to see, I recommend going to the back of the ship. Dad and I were posted up here. The ships usually spin around a few times when they're by a glacier and you just get the best views without all the chaos and people cramming towards the front of the ship. Like I said, I've cruised a few times to Alaska. I can speak from experience. Get yourself a cup of hot cocoa and enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.